All right, welcome everyone to today's session on uh, benefits of a document subscription. My name is Aaron Dunn and I'm joined today uh, by David Devine, so who is our sales and development manager at Smarter SMSF. So this is part of, uh, I guess, a, a, a series of webinars that we are now running and you will have seen a lot of the, I guess, what we call our product demonstration um, sessions that we've been running throughout 2022 to help connect what I call the technical to the practical. And this is around implementation of what you need to do with your SMSF um, clients. And you know, a lot of you may be members of Smarter SMSF already, maybe on a training uh, context, or you attend training that we run. And a lot of the conversation that has happened over the journey is, is well, Aaron, that's great. Um, you know, I get what it needs to be done here, but how do I actually do it? And that was really the catalyst for us back in 2018, 17, 18, it was um, to build out a document platform to really bridge the gap and help you understand um, how to successfully implement and then naturally use the technology and so forth as well to do that in an efficient way. And over that time, we've naturally grown to a significant number of documents, um, 70 plus now in the SMSF space. And that has always been our core focus and will always be our focus. So depth of knowledge and depth of documentation is our key differentiator when it comes to uh, how we offer our documents and the packages that we put together. So today is really, again, about those um, people that have been ordering documents from us uh, and have for some time, but haven't really taken that next step about the understanding why a subscription may be a better path than a pay-as-you-go basis. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to get David to talk a little bit today um, through a lot of the conversations that he's been having over the past 12 months as well to understand that journey as to why and why firms here are utilizing a subscription and what was the trigger point um, to help identify and then execute ultimately um, into that subscription path. And what we've identified here is that we've seen across uh, a range of members that have obviously signed up over the past 12 months and, and much longer, but really isolated down into a far more current scenario, two specific journeys. And we want to share with you um, a, around those journeys, what they were and what was therefore the catalyst for people to um, undertake a subscription through Smarter SMSF. So the first one is what we call a specific needs subscriber. And that is obviously coming in with a specific need and how Smarter SMSF can help facilitate that specific need for your business. And the second one is a more interesting one and a much longer time frame here. And what we are calling our proactive pathway to membership, where you'll see individuals that may have um, simply commenced and started ordering. And it may have been one document, um, and it may have been through BGL, may have been through our own site, but it's then just progressed on. And it's the exploration that starts to occur through that, that starts to build up, obviously, a quantum of orders that then can have and lead to a conversation around whether a subscription would be worthwhile or not. So we're going to, we haven't used um, real names and so forth, but we've built this on actual clients that we have seen purchase these subscriptions over the past 12 months and the reasons, again, why we then got that shift, whether it was down journey one and some subsets of journey one or whether it was through that journey two process. So let's get stuck into the first one. And David, I'm going to hand over to you here about this specific needs subscription um, and get you to talk about, I guess, where this starts from a conversation and inquiry or something um, and how, I guess, uh, things transpire from there. Right, Aaron, thank you. Yeah, so um, usually it could be, a, you know, an email or even a phone call that uh, out of the blue, a business is looking for 
a bit of um, assistance of where they actually may actually, if I stay, start from the very beginning, that um, they may already have a subscription with another organization. It may not be a fresh um, start of, right, I need to do this particular task, yep. uh, running through a number of documents that they've got with their clients. So they think, well, they may have actually been also to a, a training session to go, well, I've got this need that's been identified. Yep. I need not, to actually get the support talks. that they need from existing yep. um, providers as well, which is a common thread that we're hearing. Yeah. Or, or, and, and that uh, support part is all about being in, engaging with whoever they're dealing with. Um, yep. And they could be just having, picking up the phone and talking to someone. <laughs> so um, that's a, a bit of a theme that's going on at the moment. Uh, and with that identification, they've said, well, look, I've got a number of clients who need document updates can you assist? What type of documents do you have? I'm doing a, a, a bit of a background check about who you are. I've seen or I've attended sessions and uh, I want to find out what it's all what it all means. So can you set uh, me in motion uh, of finding out, well, let's have a look at your documents, perhaps with a sample, um, looking at uh, the type of packages that are available to meet and match what they're currently on. Uh, and then look at the the number of uh, funds that they're they're managing to work out then with the discussion to see if it's feasible from the very from the very outset. And then moving into that um, is that that decision right? And through a conversation, it could be a case of well, I'm, I'm not the decision maker. I'm here to to uh, find out what it's all about, but I've got other people I need to report to, and through a a conversation we might say well let's do a demonstration let's mm. show you and ask uh, find out from a series of questions uh is it right uh for the um the uh, decision to be made going forward yep. um that may lead to um you know uh all sorts of uh show and tell around a, a board table with a number of people asking all sorts of questions to see if it you know if there's similarities with their current processes that may then move into uh, a period of trial with a, a number of documents to test through the system. Uh, and then after a period of time, it could be then a case of, yep, let's put a proposal together uh, and look at the cost analysis and the benefit analysis uh, to uh, perhaps migrate across to the, the smarter platform. Yeah, so David, a quick one there. I think what we typically see, you know, we have discussions with with um, clients on a regular basis uh, or potential clients here, prospective clients and, and, and clients, I guess, generally in other parts of, of our business. But what, what does happen is, um, you know, we've built a whole suite of videos and webinars and training and so forth. So we're not going to sit there and spend, you know, half an hour and whatever looking at a you know oh here's how the integration work here's how to order a document most of you are fairly well versed and skilled in in the production of this sort of stuff or could work yourself around that so so when we we will um the reason why we then have available something like a trial and and i guess then subject to the number of documents and funds and so forth that might be needed we um, scale that trial accordingly but it's all about giving you the keys to be able to actually um, go and experience it firsthand. And I think that's the most important thing to go, well, we don't want to kind of take you down a path and it looks great, but then once you use it, it, it feels all clunky and, and so on and so forth. Here's a trial. Here's three documents, five documents, 10 documents. Again, we'll determine that based upon um, the size and number of funds and the type of orders that you'd be doing. Uh, and and really give you the power and control and work with you naturally throughout that period of time um, to help analyze and ask questions and give us feedback, I think, most importantly as well. Yeah, that's right. And ultimately, if it is a, it's a yes and it's uh, they're on board, um, then it's a case of once you get going, it's crucial. There is an onboarding process, an induction, if you'd so uh, put it that way, that um, there's a conversation and a regular check-in that you're actually um, running with a, a, a particular process that's working for you. Um, you've actually got that support and the help when you need it, um, and also the um, and feedback along the way. Mm. So um, and that's in, that's crucial. So we're always 
uh, we're not we're always looking for ways of um, uh, evolving if uh, with yep. our with all the new clients that we um, we actually get taking yeah. on board. I think that, and that comes back to values in our business. Yeah, we talk about nimble and we talk about things about being connected and and a lot of the conversations that we have with our specialist clients in particular. Um, there's there's feedback that we'll take on board around, well, could we actually add this into the document or could we do that? Um, and we're regularly uh, taking on board that feedback, and making the changes if, if they're warranted um, and, and advising naturally if it's not warranted as to why. Uh, and the other thing I put there is we build for the 98%. So what does that mean? It means that the, what we want to try and keep our ordering forms as simple as possible so that 98% of those orders go through and go through as seamlessly as they possibly can. Yep, we're going to get the 2% that will require us to take it offline and then remedy that document for you because there's an enduring power of attorney that needs to sign it rather than the member themselves. There's an employer sponsor or someone that is attached to that um, upgrade that needs to also execute so we work with you to deal with the 2% and using that support process to obviously facilitate that. So um, that, that's an important part to understand. We're not going to be um, creating overly complex ordering forms for only 1% or 2% of the um, process. Uh, we naturally have tool tips and so forth that we have in our forms to help you identify and understand important issues. Um, but by and large, we want to stick with what the majority and the significant majority are naturally doing. So when we look at this specific needs subscription, again, this is the fact that we say people are coming to us with a, with a need to get a deed upgrade done on a multitude of, of funds, uh, constitutions, and they may be done simultaneously. Uh, death benefit nominations is another one that we see within that legal space. So there are three um, that probably are our most common uh, around, again, upgrades that happen. But equally, over the past 12 months or so, we've seen a huge uptick in investment strategies uh, and the need, again, to upgrade and, and more broaden the, the way in which um, this sort of documentation at a best practice level is obviously implemented within clients. And we also have those that maybe just come in and deliberately just access maybe pension suite of documentation. And interestingly, and we're going to talk about the two different examples here um, between, I guess, you know, needing certain legal documents to be able to upgrade and, and therefore um, continue to comply with your SMSF clients, but also talk about the concept of what I call the self-preparer. So we have many firms that still self-prepare a range of documents. There is a skill set within that organization that will allow for them to produce documentation that they think is sufficient for the needs of their clients. Um, and that may be around pensions, it may be around investment strategy, it may be around a broad range of things. And rather than relying upon SMSF templates, maybe out of your software that you don't think are sufficient, you've tried to bridge that gap through a self-preparation process. So, David, let's go into the what I'd call the, you know, the subscription economics here, um, where we see it across um, legal documents in particular. So that the example here with Jackie and the and the trustee upgrades. Yeah, and and she's approach is saying, well, I've got. 80 SMSF clients uh, and the corporate trustees, and the, you start to do an analysis straight off and go, well, how many documents are you looking uh, to actually um, generate? And in this example, there's 160 documents. On a pay-to-go basis, because that's where everyone actually commences the journey. And if you actually do the numbers of that particular document, that's about $200 um, without GST, you're looking at approximately $32,000 for a cost. So straight away, you start to introduce, there is a, a better economic <laughs> approach to doing the, uh, the generation of documents. And the, the, based on the types of uh, subscription documents, it would, it would probably the best fit in this case uh, is a Create 250 package. And you've got the price on the screen there of 
$800 a month or $8,000 a year. And straight away, you do the numbers and it's bringing the average cost straight down to about $60 a document to produce. And from 250, ordering, Jackie's going to order 160, there's, a, there's an additional 90 documents of value you're introducing to the subscription. If you're comparing an order as a pay-as-you-go versus a, a, a subscription, you've got to I actually look at another uh, calculation to do with a break-even point. And in this example, there's 48 documents that Jackie would produce as a pay-as-you-go um, to actually work out and go, well, hang on a second. I've only got to be able to produce 48 documents in this scenario versus 160. So there's actually a leftover uh, of 202 additional documents that she can use over the balance of the year of the, of the uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. So you look at that single order processes, but with this particular engagement with Jackie, you're saying, well, you're, you're generating quite a, a substantial number of documents. And here is a table of straight away that we create 250 documents. So not just the, the type of deed or an investment strategy that she's approaches with to update, you're introducing then a potential balance of 90 documents that she can choose up to 70 in the library of documents available on the platform. Yeah, so, so if that, they want to big. create new companies, new super funds, pension documents, things that go beyond the scope of why she may have initially engaged us in the first instance, um, and, and broaden, I guess, the firm's um, introduction to uh, the suite of documents that we have. And I think, David, the really interesting thing here, and this is where we see you know, people go, oh, well, why, why? I'm not going to use 90 extra documents. Um, and I think people get hooked up on that piece. And as we spoke about, I guess, on this previous slide, the break-even point here would be at 48 if you purchased it on a pay-as-you-go basis. And if we look at it on a 160 orders through the subscription, even if you didn't touch those 90 documents, you've dropped your average cost down to 60 as opposed to $200. So a lot of people say, oh, well, maybe, look, I just disperse it to the client. What's it really matter? Um, this, is, this is really a conversation for you to be saying, um, I might be dispersing it, but do I want that margin or do I want to be, um, uh, you know, in essence, handing that what could have been that margin across to the client to pay? And, you know, a lot of people are now coming around to that to say, well, look, we can still charge the client a certain fee, but through the subscription process, we're going to be able to improve our margin uh, and therefore, the result of the work that we have to put in is going to be financially better off for us than simply just dispersing that and adding it on. The other thing here, and David, I'll get you to quickly talk through this, is we then said, all right, well, what about the person that goes, well, look, I don't, the 90 documents has no appeal to me. Well, let's scale it back mm -hmm. and get a create 100. And I guess the analysis here is showing that even through that process, yeah, you might be closer to um, this create 250 result, but you're not going to be anywhere near the result, even with the surplus number of documents that are available. Yeah, and that's and that that could be a conversation piece that um, we go. Well, what about if we take a, a lower amount of um, subscription? It's like, well, yeah, let's let's do some number crunching. And in this case here, you know, we've got a, a create 100. Uh, you've still then got a balance of pay as you go to to you know meet the requirement of 160 documents. If you even look at the, the Create 50, uh, you've got- So we got added that then, on to try and get yeah. to 150 documents. Yeah. So you've got 100 plus 50 plus then additional 10 page go documents. So mm. you add those columns up and you know, you're, you're looking at almost you know, $22,500 uh, worth of saving uh, versus page go And it's simply a case of doing the analysis and being flexible in your thought process to go, well- okay, I'm not just going to generate documents here. Is there anything of value that I can take away from this process? And the answer yeah. is yes. Yeah. And, and, and what you can see here is that it, from your perspective and our perspective, it's a scale game. So what we see here is as the subscriptions increase, 
the average cost per document drops. But what we also see with our clients is that those that have higher volumes really have a, um, a sharp focus on efficiency and very much kind of rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So um, the impact on us is very minimal because of the efficiency that is gained throughout that process, as opposed to someone where we do have a higher per document cost on say a Create 25, but it's still going to be miles in front of um, where an individual would be buying on a pay-to-go basis. And that's the analysis that we can work with you to determine um, how that plays out. We've got a doc calculator there and, and David um, spends a bit of time obviously working on that himself um, with clients that are interested in this scenario. So the other one I wanted to touch on, and you may have seen me if you've been to other sessions that we've run before, is this self-preparer comparison because it is about the cost-benefit analysis here in preparing those rather than relying upon the technology and expertise that we have here at Smarter SMSF. And there was five areas here that we've identified that a self-preparer needs to be able to assess against um, to analyze whether a subscription works or not. So it's that knowledge and research and the time that goes in to keep up to date. Um, it's the need to then build that template. And that is both from a um, composition initially and then potentially review that may occur around that. Um, it needs to have various combinations that need to be um, agreed to. Uh, you may invest in some technology to deliver that, or you may be just simply relying upon templates um, to do so. You then have the construction of those multiplied by the number of clients that you have. And then naturally you have a review or maintenance process that needs to be adhered to around that as well. So again, if we go through an example here, the, the example we have is, is James that has 100 SMSF clients. So this is where the discussions that we've had are, well, I have an investment strategy need that we're going to go out and apply it against all of our clients um, for the year to ensure that the auditors are happy that CISREG 4.09 has been adhered to and have been adequately considered all of those particular areas. So we have um, different, I guess, team members that would be working on this, um, both from a senior point of view and a partner point of view, and we have a costing that needs to be done that would formulate um, what this would ultimately cost the firm to do. Now, you can see here on the right-hand side, we've got an estimate of time. We've got an estimate of time around the build. We've assumed there's no scalability around this. Because, and we've now got a larger level of time in the preparation um, per document with an average time charge rate. So it might be done by a graduate or admin person or otherwise. And then we've got to ensure that we're maintaining that information on an ongoing basis as and when you need to get that um, those templates done for particular clients. They might not all be done in a week and the ball, um, the ball may move down the road, I guess, in respect to what needs to be done. So we come up with nearly $30,000 here, which means to break even, we need to, based upon chargeables, because it's an opportunity cost, we would have to charge $300 for the production of those own templates. Now, if we looked at a Create 100 pack here, what we are going to see is not only the subscription cost, yes, there might be some time around the due diligence of the firm to be happy with the templates and so forth. And then through the technology, you're going to be able to save probably half an hour or more in respect to the document preparation. And again, we've applied that same charge rate. So we're now looking at $11,500 um, charge or, or fee to the bit firm versus $29,000. So what we could achieve by way of this is we could still charge that $300 for the investment strategy, but we've now got ourselves a direct uplift in profit of $180 per fund or $18,000. So really important that you understand this slide here around the cost of production inside your organization and what is the best utilization of time of those individuals that would be responsible for that and whether there is an alternate solution such as through the subscription that would allow for you to successfully navigate through that process. 
So again, I would be asking here, how often is this occurring in my practice? What documents are coming up that need to be done either regularly or either irregularly? So we do see not only investment strategies being generated quite often, but we do then see things like contribution reserving in June. It may be contribution splitting. Um, it might be death benefit nominations. It might be LRBAs, et cetera, et cetera. But get some type of analysis in particular around those compliance-based documents to be able to support what you need to do. So how many templates? Are they, are they aligned to the deed that we have in the firm? How much time is our team spending on these tasks? What are the impacts maybe impinging on us to keep up to date in respect to these? And can we therefore better resource plan within our business through the utilization of a document subscription? So a couple of examples here. Um, there are new uh, requirements with SuperStream. Obviously, auditors are going to have a fairly significant focus on this around the SuperStream standards within 6.17 uh, and how we adhere to that. So minutes around the rollovers uh, in and out uh, are going to need to be documented and demonstrated accordingly. Um, if you want to hear myself and Shelley Banton, you'll see later today our SMSF Advisor Show talks to this very issue and the expectation that auditors are going to have in this space. That is just one example of um, a document that needs to be prepared and maintained and kept up to date around the requirements. So are you doing that in your business or are you better relying upon not only the specialization that we have, but the technology that can sit behind yep. it and get it done efficiently as well. Uh, and Aaron, on that second point there, um, a number of conversations with people I have is I ask that question. You've commenced ordering an investment strategy report yep. and it's ad hoc, but how many are you likely to prepare over the next six to 12 months? months. And 90% yep. in most cases say, I don't really know. I'm just going to continue down the ad hoc approach. Yep. So yeah there is a, a cost benefit of um, having that as a uh, uh, an analysis in the business. Yep. So that takes a good uh, segue into what we call journey two. So that's the proactive pathway to subscription. So David, let's kind of explore this a bit further and take us through from the time in which someone is looking at um, documents generally through the Smarter SMSF platform. Yep. So they've, uh, thank you Aaron, there's, there's, Someone has been to our website and discovered the website. They've been to an event, a training session, uh, a webinar, a live event, and they've gone to the website and they've actually filled out the pay-as-you-go form and filled in the details. Because they have a need to complete an order of a document. That generates a login, uh, making sure they've got their confirmed email address so the service will align. So you don't get your, uh, a lot of people when I, um, I get triggered in the system that someone's actually signed up, I will immediately give them a call to establish initial con uh, uh, consultation, if you, if you say call, call that, um, based on, have you got your login details? No, have a look in your junk folder. Okay, I've got that, righto. Are you using um, BGL or class in your business? If the answer is yes, there's additional contact of support materials, which I'll issue, um, a help guide, making sure they've got the initial navigation of the platform, and that includes finding the sample documents. So they might have uh, come with a particular need of one document, but with that engaging piece, it's all about, well, did you know there's other documents you can look at? Mm. You can open, download, take it to management, uh, and look at the, the structure of the deed, if that's the case. Um, we do have another uh, webinar we did uh, just uh, about a week ago on the, the breakdown and the structure of the deed, which um, uh, is well worth um, reviewing. Then as time progresses, it's all about monitoring. So every time there's a document order through the system, I'll get notification of that. I will, you know, pretending uh, potential on the regularity of the order, look at uh, how those orders are, uh, are weighing out. And that's all about the frequency and the cost to then identify, wow, you're getting near a trigger point here of perhaps a crate 25. Mm. Yeah, will... so, so David here, it's it's very much a process that we have built in in our own systems to track by counter um, how many documents particular people are ordering. And therefore, based upon the activity that individuals um, are doing, 
we are getting flagged to or arrange for a discussion with you to try and work out whether you are best suited doing what you're currently doing or whether there is an alternative that may be better to support you via subscription. And it might be one person doing this order. It could be a number of people within the firm, firm. ordering yep. where no one's talking to each other. They're just ordering a document and they've all got individual logins. So um, I've, yeah, I've had quite a few uh, discussions with the organisations <laughs> with those type of scenarios. Yep. So, um, and that's when um, I'll do an analysis, which is the next slide. Yep. Uh, and this is, well, actually, can I jump one yep. further forward? Uh, yep. So uh, you can see here, this is a, uh, an, a, a re based on a real uh, discussion where uh, a number of people are ordering documents willy-nilly within a firm. And from the email track, uh, it's from the same business, I'll then identify that um, it's worthwhile having that conversation piece that there is, as, as you can see here, um, Roy's firm has um, believed to have ordered 18 documents on a pay-as-you-go basis. That could be, as I said, one person or a number of people. The average cost is $171 in this example. So it's uh, dispersed out to the clients. Um, there's no understanding of the volume or the frequency, all that total spend. And that's when that engagement, I'll um, pick up the phone and have a talk to, to Roy and say, well, have you thought about moving on to a subscription? Because it's not just the price, it's the extra value that, that it brings. Yeah. And in this example here, I'll, uh, I'll put in there's 18 documents have been ordered. The total spend to date here is $3,085, the average cost. So based on a, a Create 25 package, there's seven documents to go in, to meet that subscription if this was moving into... Um, the subscription, it's at a pay-as-you-go basis. Look at the total cost of the further seven documents to order for a total of $4,284. And yet, a subscription of a Crate 25 is paid yearly, $1,800, or by the month, $2,160. So you can see there's a green column there and of a potential saving straight off of moving on to that becoming a member, basically. Hmm. I've even gone through on that bottom left-hand quartile there of if, they, if a business wants it, I can identify who's ordered, what, do, how many documents per month, and the total to, um, you know, to justify, well, this is what you've spent. So it's a bit of a, an enlightenment for, uh, for Roy uh, that um, he's ordered 18 documents and spent over $3,000, mm. where potentially he could have spent $1,800. Yeah. So the other thing then from those examples is we regularly, given that we are regularly engaging with our members, we wanted to get some insights from them about the subscription and, and quite clearly, and hopefully from today's webinar, it will demonstrate to you that the penny does drop at some point about the economics. So we do have, um, we do have people in what you can see in the second bullet point there, um, that have disbursement syndrome. Um, so the fact that they go, well, I'm not interested. You know, we just disperse it to our client. That's not the conversation um, that or people aren't getting, I guess, the economics as we spoke about at the top here. So it's, you know, what are your total costs? What are the average costs that you're spending? Um, and what therefore is the break-even point? So rather than saying, and going back to our example before, that I've got 90 surplus documents, I'm not going to use those, therefore it doesn't um, validate the need, take it to the point of what the average cost would be based upon the documents that you do need, and you're going to find out that you're miles ahead. And when you compare that to a PAYG disbursement, then you're looking at something very different there. So that whole disbursement syndrome, I think is something that is absolutely critical. And, and David spends a lot of time talking with people about how the subscription will actually improve the margins for you. Um, I think the other thing here is uh, with a subscription, you get then more access to stuff on our site, in particular visibility over what activity is happening under your account, in particular with the subscription. So you can see that counter um, and you'll get notifications if you are nearing that counter, as we get notifications to have the conversation 
with you as well. And David, what we also find here is that if people are unsure, one of the things we strongly suggest is to get started. So if you think you might be a Create 100, and you, but you're not sure, well, you are going to be better starting at least a Create 50 and then topping up from there. So that ease of use to upgrade, do you want to just give us a little bit of an explanation there? Yeah, um, I'm not sure where the perception is that they think once you've got, you're locked in and you can't move in terms of the package of purchase. And it's, yeah, you, you certainly can move uh, with the flexibility of, topping up. So if you find, if you started with Create 50 and within, you know, you've got 12 months and within four months, you've got you know, 42 documents produced already, then there is notification. And with our observation, we can have that conversation piece to say, look, don't worry about that. We will, you can move back into your account and buy the purchase another Create 50 pack or move up to the 100 piece when mm there is an average cost disbursement per document that will reduce even further. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing here is the ability to connect all of your team members to that one um, counter subscription there. Uh, so we do run what we call a primary and secondary function there. So there is an admin that is in its administrator level that is linked to the account, i.e. the person that purchased that subscription most likely and then linking the staff to that, have as many in essence as you like. Um, and based upon the steps that you want to have with those different people, you can then implement some level of control over the authorization. So a common one, something that we've just rolled out is around saved orders. Um, so if you have staff that you want to be able to um, produce that documentation, um, but they you don't want them to, you want it to be reviewed before it's submitted, um, you, that person as the primary person, can then go into that saved order, review the information yourself, and then naturally submit. Now, if there are orders that have been submitted, um, as a member, you have the ability to reset those and redo it again, all barring um, companies for obvious purposes. So there's a quick question here, um, and this is in respect to pension commencement. So if an SMSF is not on a smarter SMSF deed, can your documents, e.g. pension commencements, work and be compatible with the existing deed? So that is a very good specific example because we do have um, templates on our platform that cover both options. There is a question that does ask whether um, the pension has been commenced in accordance with the Smarter SMSF deed. And if it has, then we include a couple of um, special and specialist concepts in those documents. One is that it becomes a special rule of the fund. And two, it can be a paramount document, which is about ranking that document over other documents where there may be conflict. So if you choose no, then you do have, in essence, a set of documents that you can link back to an existing trust deed um, and doesn't necessarily need to be the smarter SMSF trust deed from there. So, um, so that one. Uh, so a couple of just, I guess, things about our Smarter SMSF platform. We spoke about earlier, it, there is a strong focus on automation to be able to create those documents. It is about saving you time and money. We do have legal support that comes behind that um, through Hill Legal that may deal with specific issues that you might have in particular um, deficiencies that may require um, rectifications or some other remedial action. Um, our platform is built on AWS um, and the data and, and so forth is hosted and stored in Sydney. We spoke about that primary and secondary function. Um, you have the ability to use all different forms of acceptable cards, Visa, MasterCard and MX, and not only with the PAYG orders, but also with your subscriptions and in particular when you may be ordering companies uh, and you'd require a card for that. Um, all SSL secured from a payments point of view. Uh, you get, uh, in essence, a, a delivery almost instantaneously, but within a few minutes, subject to the size of, of the and complexity of the different orders, uh, you get in electronic form in email, uh, one confirmation uh, of that, that the order has processed, two details of your order that you can check that information off from, and then three, the delivery of that order itself, which will allow you to download from that link 
or you can go into your completed orders to be able to do so. And as I said before, you've got some additional things here around your saved orders um, to be able to utilize through the integrations um, or just to obviously go through some procedural things that you have in your firm. Um, tool tips as well to help you identify things. A full ticketing system um, that we spend a lot of time, effort and energy putting into to give timely responses. And we uh, have that as a key measurement in our business, both in first response and total time to response, and then a happiness score uh, internally around the res resolution of that as well. And then of course, our knowledge base that gives you access to samples, videos, other updates, integrations, and what's new and happening across our platform. And finally, you know, our platform does each and every year have to go through a um, security standard questionnaire, both from BGL and class and soon to be Supermate to ensure that we are compliant with the ATO's operational framework as an approved add-on provider. So we do go through some fairly stringent processes around that that should give you some comfort and certainty as clients of one of those providers um, too. So David, let's kind of look at the next step about that journey to beginning and becoming a member. Yeah, so everyone will commence at the PAYG sign-up stage, getting that confirmation of your email and the login, uh, the initial contact from myself, uh, just to make sure you're comfortable with the navigation, you're able to find the sample documents to be able to order a document. It might be also, you know, having a number of other team members who uh, want to order documents as well. Uh, that question about integration, what type of additional software packages uh, you may be utilizing. And then from that journey one of that, that um, need of, I've got a repetition of you know, 80 documents I need to put through the system. Um, it may lead to a demonstration of the platform, arranging multiple staff, uh, perhaps a trial period of time to work through those documents um, and then look at additional uh, support services, and they could be training, et cetera, and technical support as well. Yeah. Uh, journey two, where that uh, uh, we saw uh, a sole proprietor perhaps started ordering at an ad hoc basis, and just that monitoring of the orders to then move to a trigger point to have a further discussion about, well, is it PAYG or becoming a member based on orders and frequency, et cetera? Yep. Um, so follow up question there as well, just about the pension one before. So um, we wouldn't, we yeah, would, would we, Smart SF need to see a copy of the existing deed to check it? No, we don't. Um, but you would be needing to reference that deed in respect to the preparation of those documents, because we do specifically ask for the various rules or clauses that um, would allow for the powers to pay that pension. And it raises a good point here because um, it is all about then if you are not sure about particular things, you can get in contact with us. And, and this is a, a good example as also as with the deed updates, where you may have some deeds that are outside of a standard deed that you may have. And we will look at that. We will give you some guidance. We will hold your hand to help you um, ensure that you can get the document orders that you need to get done. So it doesn't matter what sort of document or if you need some level of support before you order or throughout the ordering process, that is why we have our ticketing system um, to be able to help ensure that you get that response that you need and get it in a timely manner, knowing full well that you're busy um, and need to get stuff done in particular this time of year. Um, so a couple of other things here, um, if you've got uh, a need to have a look at sample documents and so forth, naturally um, that is there and available. Um, in terms of can we purchase another package if we use up our, our document quota, David, I might get, I might um, sort of fire some of these at you. Yeah, well, we've already discussed that, that yes, yep. if you started a Crate 50 and you, you're chewing through the, the documents quite quickly, you yeah, you can either purchase the same amount again or go to the next level. So yep, in, yeah, it's flexible. Yep. Um, in terms of technical support, um, I guess what it, we could break that down into two parts. Um, we do have a technical support subscription as part of our training subscription. Um, so if you need guidance on particular topics, um, there is a subscription package that we can support you in respect to technical questions. But if you do have 
some sort of guidance that you need in respect to the preparation of that document, again, there is that layer of technical support um, that is available, again, to assist you as part of that particular ordering process. And, and we'll come back to you um, with some guidance and potentially the right document or how you need to go about completing that document. Um, the other thing, David, is I guess uh, sometimes we get ones that haven't quite generated as they're expected to. Uh, so what's the process there? Yeah, and or it could be uh, that other scenario there where it's been a typo and the person's received a document finds that there's uh, an error. Uh, they may call me direct. They may call another part of the uh, of our business direct. Um, if it is something, as in that example, it can be quickly fixed uh, either back through yourself. Um, there's a there's a part of the uh, the platform that allows you to, in so far as uh, edit what yep. you've created, so resetting, and, yep. resetting the order. Yep. Uh, if it's something we can assist on the phone, then we can do that straight away. Uh, if it is something that's a little bit, uh, needs uh, a bit more work uh, or to take it offline, then there is a ticketing system. I will ask the person who's I'm chatting with uh, to um, go through the ticketing support email, uh, throw a screen image if you need to, and then we will respond to that. You'll get a, a ticket number, so it can be tracked and followed yeah. up. Yeah. And, and importantly, you can track that through the platform as well. So the status of it, there is a support area um, and you can go in and you can actually see those tickets listed in there uh, and then naturally follow up through there as, as much as through sending an email simply to support at smartersmsf.com. Um, David, the other one, I guess, is the the decision making process about you know moving through a due diligence process. Um, we spoke a little bit about it before, but you know the ability to you know, give give things a bit of a go before yeah, you and, buy, and, try and before that, you buy. Yeah. And that and that um, business uh, may have already another subscription with another provider, um, and those service levels aren't quite meeting expectations, so they've they've approached us. So um, you know keeping those existing processes in place to then try and look at um, their due diligence of uh, looking at Smarter SMSF to see are, are they, you know, are the documents meeting um, their expectations? And then there's that support level and the costs, et cetera. Yeah, so one thing, to, one thing to note, so we are happy, I think we probably have the best part of 10, 15 in trial at the moment. Um, it's not, we don't have any predetermined timeframe, but we're not also, if we gave out five documents, um, we're not going to be giving you months and months on end to be able to sort of use those documents. So what we do say in respect to a trial is go in. If you've got clients that you want to use them for, knock yourself out. We're more than happy for you to do so. But the idea of a trial is to allow you to come in and order and test out the process based upon the documents that you believe you'll order and need the most inside your firm. So if that means you get, we give you access to five documents and you go in and you create a new SMSF, you do a deed upgrade, you do a pension and investment strategy and LRBA. Um, if you can do them for real clients, great. Otherwise, you would do it for a, a range of test or dummy clients. Um, and ideally, we give you a couple of weeks to go through that process. And then you'll hopefully be in a position to make a decision from that point in time. So um, I guess just uh, from our point of view, um, the trial is there for you to be able to use, but it's not there to try and draw out that process. Um, it's just to help go through to be able to make a decision to proceed or not. Um, and the final thing here in terms of other integrations and so forth, um, we do have a fairly long list of things that we are working on at the moment. Um, the TFN and ABN registration, we are working um, through that as we speak and scoping that out. Um, we are also um, commencing work on a Supermate integration as well. Um, we have a, a number of other sort of projects that we're working on. We'll share uh, a bit of an update as to what's going on with Smutter SMSF in July, but they are two things that we are getting some regular feedback on that people would like. Um, so they are definitely front and centre from a development point of view. Uh, David, do you want to give a bit of an update, I guess, just around the subscription packages? Yes, uh, there is a, uh, a, a, a there's another slide on um, the current pricing and structure. Um, we've done a bit of a revision, and unfortunately, we're we're moving to a higher price 
commencing on the 1st of July. So, um, if yeah, you so wanna, some context, yep. some context for that, I guess, you know, as the business is continuing to grow and evolve, um, we're wanting to continue to invest uh, in more people uh, and more products and services. Uh, and the reality is of that is we need uh, additional funds to be able to do so. Um, so we're, they're not changes that are going to impact our existing subscribers. They are changes from these prices that you can see here that will um, impact new subscriptions from the 1st of July, 2022. So our top tier pack currently at Create 500 um, is being re renamed and reframed um, and we'll have a broad range of customizations that will be able to be done for that. Um, we're currently working in a beta with um, one particular sizable firm around that customization for cover pages and, and so forth. Um, so there is an ability to look at that create plus, again, based upon the size of your business and, and really what I'd call an enterprise type version there. Um, but as David said here, um, the reflection of that change will be for um, new clients and not for existing. So there is naturally an opportunity to lock in those prices now. So sorry, David, for cutting you off, but I just wanted to give yep, some context right. to people yep. why we've actually made that change. Yeah. And um, and in that particular table on the, the next slide, yep. um, you can see, you know, in reflection, uh, what we've just been through with, uh, with Jackie, um, hence where we've picked Create 25. So you can see we're looking at the estimated number of SMSFs um, or the document order that was going to be put through. So we're not sort of fitting into, you know, we're not sort of pulling the numbers out of the sky here. We're actually generally looking at uh, a subscription package that will meet the need of the business. And uh, if there needs to be an adjustment as we went through that other calculation of a Create 100 and a plus a Create 50 to do the numbers to see which is the most economic. Yeah. All right, well, that pretty much wraps it up. So I guess in summary, um, so today was about helping you understand the different journeys uh, as to where we have seen our new members come on board in particular over the last 12 months or so. Uh, and to give you an understanding to try and resonate you know, with maybe one of those particular journeys and the examples that we've shown for you today. I guess ultimately, why do people um, rely upon us as a business and therefore look at subscriptions in terms of what we provide? So quite clearly, we are a trusted brand and identity in the SMSF sector. And it's that trust comes from quite clearly the high level of expertise, knowledge, intel and insights in the SMSF industry. Um, as David has sort of mentioned throughout today, we are getting a lot of um, feedback from people looking to come to us that timeliness in support and being able to answer the questions that you need answered in a timely fashion is critical. So one is being able to answer the question that is being asked in the first instance, and two is not saying, well, actually, we're not sure, and then it takes days and days and days on end to be able to get a response um, to those things. And so that's both a pre-ordering process and a post-ordering process. And as I mentioned before, we do really pride ourselves on the fact that we've got the expertise and we've got the tools here to be able to support you in a timely fashion. And we see that as a key differentiator in the market, simple, but key differentiator. And ultimately um, a, a competitive and economical uh, subscription uh, that enables you to do what you need to do successfully in your business. So we, we are as a business, a reliable, scalable, low cost automated business that supports professionals in the SMSF sector. That's who we are and what we do. And we do that to enable you to focus on what you do best. So that is it. Thank you for joining us with today's session. If you do have any other questions, I'm happy to answer those now. We do have a range of um, other training coming up. Uh, we are covering our SMSF Foundations course, number of changes that will be occurring to that obviously from the 1st of July, 2022. We have a technical update on the 16th of July uh, June, I should say, and in July, we are going around the country for our SMSF Day events. Our Melbourne event is actually almost sold out and our Perth one is not far away as well. We've had a fantastic response um, with the recent closure of our early bird. Um, if you want to find out more, 
go on to our website, smarterestmsf.com forward slash events, and you can find out more about each of those training sessions that we have listed there for you. So David, thank you once again for being a part of today's session as well. If you do have any questions, please feel free to get in contact um, with us and um, David will most likely come back to you and have a conversation to hopefully um, help you uh, look at a document subscription for your business. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us and bye for now. All right.